I finally see what what's going on. I finally got it. That's why I log everything. I try to log it and pay attention to the to the uh, to the holographic data points. I figured it out by the grace of God. He was trying to show me, but so anytime you're moving to the next level, there's and some levels are a big jump from previous levels. You know, anytime you're moving to the next level. Stuff's gonna come back. The past test, let's say you had a problem, let's say you had a problem with drinking. And you say, oh, I'm gonna stop drinking. And you go a week, two weeks, month, whatever it is, and you don't drink. And then some somebody calls you up and says, hey, let's go to the bar. Now I don't have a problem, I don't have a weakness for drinking, but somebody else might. And so it's a test things come back into your world to test you. Are you serious? Are you resolute? Are you wanting to move into real reality? Are you wanting to leave fake reality delusions and live in healthy, wealthy and wise? Do you really want that? Because it's going to be a, a, a shift. You got to give up your laziness. You got to give up your fake perception filters and you got to give up all the stuff from the old Adamic nature. Now, nobody's perfect, and it's always a progress, but sometimes the next level, the next level is a bigger step than the previous levels, you know? They were doing a pressure test on the uh, fire hydrant, and I thought, okay, let me video this, and I thought about it about for 24 hours. I thought about it overnight, and I thought, what is that about? What's that symbolic of? And I told somebody today, I said, my problem is, I'm, I'm rubbing shoulders and everybody just sees that car or that tree or that situation in the natural. I see spiritual truth behind every situation. Every situation you face has spiritual significance. And your perspective yesterday or last year or last week or 10 years ago about a situation changes. But the people still stuck in that other reality that you used to be in they want you to stay there with them and play in the pig pen with them or in the romper room or whatever it is that they want to play in but you've graduated to the next level they're stuck it could be family friends job you might have to change jobs you're some people are stuck and god is trying to yank them out of that job because they're not happy anymore some people are stuck in a marriage and they're cheating on each other and there's no intimacy, there's no uh, communication, communion, and they're just stuck. It's not really a marriage. I remember when I got married on my honeymoon or shortly after or something, when the man or wife are doing their thing, I stopped in the middle. I said, I said, you know what this represents? She said, what are you talking about? I said, you know what this represents? She said, what? I said, worship. I said, this represents the communion with God. The husband and wife should be communion in body, soul, spirit. He says, take up your cross. You've been bought with a price. You're no longer, your, you, it's not you. It's not your life anymore. You've been bought with a price. And so in 1 Corinthians 7, the, the woman's body is not her own. The, the wife's body is not her own. The husband's body is not his own. And so it's not just the body. It's supposed to be emotions. It's supposed to be goals and purposes, mission. If if they if she doesn't line up with your mission, it's never going to work, men. And women, if he don't have a mission, you're not going to be happy. If the man's just playing video games and has no mission, it, I don't care what it is. A mission for a business, winning souls, uh, building something, artwork, getting the truth out. If the man don't have a mission and you marry that man, there's not going to be any uh, purpose, desire, drive, goal. Once the physical gets born and then the emotional doesn't grow, the mental, the spiritual, the spiritual's not growing because it's dead from the get-go. If, if that person's not growing with you, 
There's no communion. There's no common. There's no nothing there. It's dead. It's a dead marriage. And it also typifies the camp of the saints. So in heaven, that's why Paul says, um, uh, give the younger women a sisterly kiss or a sisterly hug or whatever, or however he says it. So the brothers and sisters are in communion with the Holy Spirit which is in communion with the Holy Spirit in you. So there's union there. There's oneness there in the Spirit. So you got some brothers and sisters. And every brother or sister who's ever emailed me or we talk, I never will tell, I will never tell their business. Ever, ever, ever. You've got to protect your own people. You got to protect your own. Even if they come against me, and try to get mad for some stupid reason and blah, 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 blah. I will never repeat their business. I might use object lessons off of what I learned from talking to them to help other people, but I'll never tell it, tell where, I, where it came from. I'm not going to do that. Because there's an there's a honor code there. There's an honor code there. And the dark side has no honor code. They want you to break your honor codes. They want you to break your honor codes. That's why if you can find a church that has spirit-filled believers and the, and the members are all saved and you don't let somebody join just because they say, oh, I believe they, they haven't been tested. Are they really born again? There's churches that will say, join the church. And the first day they show up, join the church. You're going to join. They might not even be saved. What do you mean join the church? That tells you right there it's just a 5013C business. How can the unsaved join the church? Because it's not a real church. Apostle Paul said he, would, he kicked them out. He wouldn't give them one minute, five minutes, half an hour, whatever he said. If they're a legalist, kick them out. How can you have fellowship with a legalist? You can't. So if you let somebody join your church who's not saved, who's a member of the church, is in the flesh still, they're under legalism. How can they join the church because it's not a real church? It's not a real church. It's not a real soulmate if ain't spirit. If the spirit ain't together, it's not a real soulmate. If that even exists. Feels like it exists, don't it? They go away for a while and come back. They feel like you like they're like they've always been there. It's like, man, what is this? Familiar. Something that's familiar, but the more you change, and so that that pressure that came out of that fire hydrant it was the pressure is building up are you moving to the next level the pressure is building up you have got to move to the next level books because it keep the pressure is going to just keep building and building and building until you step to the next level cut them all off and you didn't cut them off they cut you off because you're saying come with me come on let's go to the next level come on Rise up, please. Don't leave, don't, don't. <laughs> Pilgrim's progress, right? Please rise up. Let's go to the next level. And they can't. They're stuck. They're in, they're in strings and nets and bands and they're tied down and they're afraid and they're scared and they don't want to leave their habits and their worldviews and their demonic outlook and they just not going to leave. But God ain't gonna let you stay. The whole it's just like the balloon in the in the pool. That that air in that balloon is gonna rise that balloon to the top. They're gonna fall off, they're gonna fall by the wayside. I mean, Pilgrim's Progress, you read that book as an allegory of the spiritual walk. It could be finances, it could be it's all connected. Anytime you're rising up spiritually, you're it's all about finances, it's all about uh your health is it's it's about the whole package the whole package the whole package and they think you're joking and they think you're lying 
and they think you're not going to leave. Think about that job that's using and abusing you, right? You're on the job, and they're using and abusing, and you, and you kind of give the red. They know that you're, you're tired of their insanity, and so you go on the Indeed, and you put your resume up, you start to get a bunch of hits, and we want to hire you, we want to hire you. A thousand people trying to hire you, you know? And you're getting ready to push push to the next level, and they, they feel it. And they, they pretend for a while, and oh, it's going to be better. That wife, that girlfriend, that significant other, <laughs> that we need to communicate. We need to speak truth. We need to talk. We need to be real. This, we need to sit down and just, what is the purpose? What's the, what's the purpose of this? Is it real? Is it fake? Am I wasting my time? I think I'm wasting my time. Hello? What's the whole purpose? Just like a job interview. You go to the job interview. Is this, ma is this match you? Does this, ma what? Does this match? Is this a match? Or is this fake reality? And so when God's pushing you to the next level, the pressure is going to just keep building and building and building. And then finally... They go out there and they, they turn that, take that uh, pipe wrench and they turn it and let all the pressure off of that fire hydrant and see how much pressure is out. See if it's working. See if it's if seeing if it's legit. Can they take? Can you take the pressure? Can you handle the pressure of going to the next level? Whoever you are. Can you look back at the old life? You might cry. You might be brokenhearted. But can you look back to the old life and say, that's not me anymore? There was one preacher who was it? He got saved. Who was it? He got saved. It was one of the preachers that was really a real popular preacher about 40 years ago. He got saved and he had, he had dated this couple of women or whatever. He got saved. And he was walking down the street. Uh, what was his name? I wish I could remember his name. Let's just say Tommy. And so this girl walks by. And she says, Tommy, it's me. It's me. Some girl used to be partying with, drinking, sex, drugs, rock and roll. And she said, it's me. Tommy, it's me. Do you remember me? It's been about five years. It's been a year. And he got saved or he got resolute. And he looked at her. He said, I know it's you, but it's not me anymore. He says, I know who you are. I know what you are, but it's not me anymore. And he just turned his head and kept walking. He never looked back. I know who you are. But it's not me anymore. Too bad. It would be a great journey together. But it's not me anymore. You'll find another Tommy. The old Tommy. But you won't find the new Tommy. Till you get new. And you can apply it. The women can apply it to their situation or whoever. This is not about men or women. This is about your spiritual. This is about your spiritual path. The pilgrim's progress. Moving to the next level. I started changing my reality about a year ago. I was eating that for like five years. I ate the same restaurant. The same two eggs, bacon, hash browns, whatever. And I went in there one day about a year. I said, you know, I'm gonna try something different. And they were all, they all dropped their jaw. They said, and I, they said, who are you? I said, I'm shifting my reality. And when I go in there today, I'm gonna get something totally different. They're gonna be, they're gonna, they're still living in the old reality. I've shifted. Yeah, I like two eggs and over well and all that, but I've shifted to the new reality. It's a new world, people, on the other side. But if you want to stay in the old the old, dark, fake, 
depressing, no purpose, no goal, no communication, no communion, no deep talks, no heart to heart, no trust. If you want to live in that, go ahead. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. That's a fake reality. I don't care about their music. That the world is completely insane. I don't care what they do. I'm going, I'm moving higher. They can they can explode a bomb and bells and whistles to try to get my attention, but it's all a distraction. And I hope you get there one day because it's all a waste of time.